I don't hide them. I just set them out right there on the, on the base of their lockers. Oh, it's for the players. Yeah, yeah, for the players. When you go? I'm not telling you, man. It's still a couple days. <laughs> so, so. Roddy, Roddy would tell us everything. Yeah, they haven't gotten them yet, so oh, okay. I, I haven't given them yet. Yeah, Roddy's still like, got a couple hey, days. Look what I got. Yeah. What's been your favorite one you've gotten, like players? Well, I mean, well, you've got 13 years of doing it now. Yeah, I'm trying to think. It depends. All that matters is what the guys like. It's not which one I liked, you know, getting for them, but. We've done a bunch of different things. The worst, or not the worst, but I got them drones one time, and one of the drones was broken within, they were pretty expensive drones too. They were, it was broken within like 10 minutes. I was like, oh man, this is okay. So, uh, but gotten a lot of different things. I appreciate those guys. Hey, so what's gonna be the key to get the wrestling game back on track here? Yeah, I think, you know, it's back to back to the details. Um, you know, obviously didn't rush it as well as we would have liked last week, but, you know, it, it comes back to the same thing, speed off the ball, making sure that, you know, we're doing a good job up front into our combination blocks, backs are on their tracks, wide receivers are, you know, giving great effort on the outside to, to get on the second level. And, you know, I'm doing my job of getting us into the right place. And so, um, you know, I think it's it's the little things, doing the little things right over and over and over uh, is what makes the run game come to life. In the review of, uh, I just went back and watched the, the touchdown, no touchdown. It looked like he was across the field, <laughs> you know, and, and then he goes down, but it looks like the ball's already across. I mean, how tough is it dealing with, you know, split-second uh, decisions like that? Yes, it's, it's, that's part of it, you know, and, and, and part of, of um, you, you know, sports is that they're imperfect. And, and so you have to, you know, find a way to, to overcome those type of things. And so, you know, whether I agree or disagree with the call, it doesn't make a difference. Um, you know, we had to find a way to get the ball in the end zone after that. And uh, we got to do a better job than we've done, you know, up until that point. I guess having watched him play, the being, being later in the year, you know, and, and having seen him uh, play, you know, so much uh, in L.A., um, you know, I guess it won't be as strange, but, you know, it's definitely a little different. Um, you know, we played a number of times against each other, so it uh, be a little bit different. But I think just being this time of the year and it being so much later, I, I, feel, like, I feel like I've gotten accustomed to it, <laughs> accustomed to seeing him in a different spot. Right. If I'll put it, like, can that, A, do you, like, does that stick out to you at all? Like, your team may be a little bit strange. And can, is that something that can manifest itself, like, when it happens over and over and over again? Yeah, I think it's just strange. Um, you know, the, the weird way so many of those games have, have ended. Um, you know, seemingly every team you thought was going to win didn't end up winning those games. Uh, really since we played him in London uh, a long time ago. So it's a strange coincidence for, for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure it'll continue to manifest itself uh, as we move forward, but it's definitely there was a, a strange period of time where those games were uh, just decided by funny plays. Yeah, you know, with a different staff being there, you don't circle back to the to, to the same game film, um, and so it doesn't come up. You know, it doesn't come up as much as you would think. But it's more just, you know, thinking back on it, uh, just in, in random times, how strange some of those games have been. Is there one to you that was stranger than the other? Uh, I always think the ones we lost were. You know, we're stranger. The ones we won were uh, not that fluky, but uh, no. You know, the the one in London was was a strange deal. I just remember they had a penalty against them when they missed a field goal, and it, but it was a dead ball penalty, so they got another another chance at it. That was a hard one. That was a tough pill to swallow. Every game when, when that goal has gotten significantly tougher with you being the player? 
you know, there's there's still that chance, right? And so um, you have to handle your your end of the bargain. Um, and, and at the same time, you know, th there shouldn't need to be any motivation. We're professional athletes, and uh, there's a lot of personal pride that goes with it. And so you know, I haven't seen that as an issue at all. I think our guys have been locked in, and we'll be ready to go. But there is a chance. We've got to continue to compete and fight and do our part uh, to extend that chance as long as we can. Work on the line yesterday, and uh, Charles Harris came up as their sack leader yep. in uh, the big game last week against the Niners. So yeah. What do you remember from him when he was here, and how does he look on tape? He's looked good. You know, he really has. I think he's playing with really good effort. Um, you know, has done a nice job for them this year. I always enjoyed Charles as a teammate. You know, he's a quiet guy, but worked hard every day, and you know, was a good person. Really, you know, always nice to see and spend time with. And so, I'm happy for him personally uh, that he's playing well. I don't, you know, I'm not sure how much it changes, you know, what, what they'll do, you know, on our end, you stay on your side of the ball and, and make sure that we're going to be as detailed as we can be. And uh, regardless of who's got the communicator on, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we, we've got to handle our business and, and make sure that we're all on the same page. Can you talk about the, uh, the motivation from the players, uh, getting, a, getting a home win, getting off that zero and five? Yeah, it's time, you know, uh, obviously, you know, we have not played as well as we would like at home this year and it's time for us to, to you know, kind of change, change that number and, and get a win. And uh, we've got to have great focus all week and, and make sure we have a really good week of preparation to give ourselves a chance to go play well on Sunday. But we'd like to change that for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to speculate. We'll see where Tajay's at, you know, later in the week. I think Tajay's done a good job for us all year. Um, you know, but it's wh whoever's available has to be ready to go. And, um, you know, our, our guys do a great job of, of working during the week. Uh, Christian Blake, Frank Darby, those guys have, have been active for us uh, at different times throughout the year and done a great job. So if their numbers get called, they'll be ready to go. Yeah, Lamade's done a great job for us since he's been here. Uh, he's a reliable guy, you know, very smart, um, you know, does a lot of dirty work for us in the run game, uh, but also has vertical speed to be able to stretch it. I mean, he's done that. He's had those kind of catches, you know, for a long time since he's been here. And so um, I think he's, you know, continuing to, to grow as a player and doing a great job for us. And I think Kyle uh, is another guy who, has improved, steadily improved as the year has gone on and, you know, continues to, to learn and develop and make plays for us. And, you know, we're going to need both those guys to play well for us Sunday. How would you describe, is there any extra concern with the game being a day in life at the prison uh, for you guys? Obviously, you want to win regardless, but is there any other extra advantage with you being able to swag this school system? I don't think so. You know, I think, you know, we only get 17 opportunities given to us. And so, uh, they're all, you know, really important. You have to have that mindset that you have to go attack and, and approach everyone, you know, the same way. Uh, there's seven, <laughs> 17 of them, that, you know, at least in my mind. So. Yeah, hey, man, I'm, you know, the old double green guy, Woody Hayes, three-yard uh, guy. I'm trying to, um, and I go to study, oh, I was reading a study about size versus space, how to, you know, use short, you know, how to run short yardage. Look like, and you're gonna try to get advantage. Where are you at on power, you know, versus space? You, you know, trying to space them out and get it, or put it put it in the power and, and, and get it. Yeah, I think you know you 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 look at those things all week. Um, you know, as as you're installing your game plan and trying to put in the plays that you want to run, and, and you try and find what's your advantage. Is it spacing them out and trying to create space to? Uh, you know, to get a gap to be able to move the chains, or do you feel like the defense that you're going against, you're better off, um, you know, packing it in and trying to go with those power percentages? And you know, we've 
you know, I think our coaches do a great job of, of trying to, you know, game plan it and give us every advantage we can. I think as players, it's our responsibility to make those plays come to life and, and to find ways, whether it is with power or space, whatever that may be, we got to find a way to get the job done. If people to help you to get, a, uh, get all up in arms when you're in the shotgun on the goal line or empty on the goal line or, you know, pitch it back seven yards when you need one, um, what, how do you, what do you say to that crowd? I mean, I don't know. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I understand, right? You don't want to take the ball further away from where you're at. Uh, you know, but scored plenty of touchdowns from the gun and thrown plenty of, of them from the gun down there on the one-yard line. And, you know, I think there's successful ways to do it, you know, multiple different looks, yeah. I'm not saying that's your – those are your words, not mine. I'm just saying in my experience, we've, we've had success doing it both ways. I think, you know, route craft, you know, understanding, uh, you know, how to come out of cuts uh, on different routes, you know, what we're asking him to do, uh, whether it be, you know, high angles or tighter angles coming out of those things, man, zone coverage, you know, being able to recognize that stuff quickly. I think also, you know, releases, releases are, are, are the key. You know, it, there's such great pass rush in this league that if you're not winning routes, you know, within the first two or three yards, it's going to be tough to have the time to be able to make those things come to life. And I think, you know, he's continued to, to get better at that. Um, we move him in a lot of different spots and ask him to do a lot of different things. And I think mastering, you know, all those different spots where he's going uh, is a work in progress, but he's gotten a lot better. But I, I think those two things, coming out of the top of routes and, and, and releases is probably the two things that, that go unnoticed maybe, uh, but where he's continuing to grow and improve. How has Ross maybe had that improvement been from you know, we want to even like, you know, like a weak spot at the bottom to, to now. Has yeah. it been that big or is it more metal? Or? It's, hard, it's, it's hard to tell uh, when you're around it every day. You know, it's like looking at yourself in the mirror. You don't, you don't see the changes every day when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Uh, you know, but at the end of the season, when you have a chance to go back and look at everything and you see, you know, where, um, you know, where he started to, to where he is now. It just feels like he's had incremental improvement and an understanding of, um, you know, what we're asking him to do. There's less time for the two of us communicating about what I expect on, on certain things, and that's where you see a lot of growth. Yeah. I, uh, I know. <laughs> trying to hold that day off. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. You know, those are things you see as you're working, you know, during the off season or, you know, during training camp when you get, you know, day after day after day of, of working with them and you start to kind of mental note it and say, okay, you know, there, there are times where with certain players that you play with, they can do special things and you have to give them opportunities to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, I, I think those those kind of opportunities are only going to grow for him as, as he continues to progress in our offense and, you know, but you do see it. I, I, I saw it pretty early on that, that he was capable of doing some of those things. One other just kind of Christmas question. I don't know if having it, you know, on a Saturday at home is the best case scenario, but what, what does that day look like for you? Obviously, you have a lot to do to get ready for the game, so what does that day look like for you? No, it's, actually, Saturday is pretty good. Um, you know, home game, those kind of things. Friday is usually, you know, our shorter day, you know, during the week, and so you have a lot of your preparation done. Uh, by the time you get out of the building on Friday afternoon and to be able to have Christmas Christmas Eve, be able to have that night. And then Saturday morning, you know, Art's done a great job of giving us time, you know, to spend with our families. Um, and then getting to the hotel later in the afternoon and, and kind of checking back in. I think it actually works out, you know, really well. You know, where sometimes you can land on a Wednesday, Thursday or, or whatever, which are your big work days, it, it makes it more difficult in those kind of situations. Uh, just Just some... Um, in-laws and, and parents coming down, which would be nice, yeah. Was that, you know, you know, it's a great story, but I was, I was you know, kind of going on in the world right now. 
Yeah, I think, you know, we'll see, see where everybody's at, you know, later in the week when it's time to fly. But, yeah, I think like everybody else, you know, you're trying to be as safe as you possibly can. My confidence has always been high, you know, in Russ. I, I think, you know, he's another guy who started on practice squad and then, you know, got opportunities, continued to get better, worked at it, uh, and has really, you know, turned into a, a very good player. I, I think, you know, the way this year shook out, he was injured early in the year, took some time, and, and then getting your legs back underneath you when you're playing games is different. Uh, and I think he's he's really gotten back to where he's he's playing like himself now. And you know I thought he played really well for us the other day. But my confidence has always been high. And you know I do think the ball finds the guys. You know you just have to stay with it. And he's done a great job of that all year of just staying the course. And when he's got his chances, go making plays. No, no, I've seen it. <laughs> We're not out there, you know, just winging it. Uh, you know, you have belief in, in the guys, and you trust, you know, the matchups that you have. And um, there's a lot of work that goes in during the week of knowing, you know, which, which routes we like our one-on-ones on, players that we're going against, um, all those type of things. And you're trying to process that, process that information, you know, when it comes up. And so um, I like – you know, Russ on, on a lot of our matchups, but certainly the two chances he got on, on go balls the last game, I thought he did a great job. You said, you said on Sunday that you've never, you've never made a play like that in the, in the NFL. There's more to Russ that. Maybe he needs to make more of those plays, huh? <laughs> he, he looked pretty good to me with that. So, no, he's done, he's done it in practice. I mean, that's a lot of this stuff starts, you know, with, with stuff people don't see and, you know, belief and, and trust and, and, you know, confidence in, in giving guys chances comes from really good work on the practice field, and that's where you're, you've got to earn it. He, uh, he, he talked a lot about, about, about being on time, being at the exact spot where you expect him to be at the exact spot because you expect him to, to be there. Is, is, that, is that an important trait for him? Like, is, that some, back up. is that something that he's really good at and how key is it in building trust that the guy's going to be exactly where he needs to be? I think it's something he's gotten a lot better at. Um, we talk about being open in the timing of the play. And, you know, you, you can double up and triple up and do four different moves that you want to do to create separation. But if it doesn't happen within the timing of how we're reading uh, progression-wise, you know, you, you're just not going to get the ball. And uh, I think he's done a great job of, of developing a rhythm and, and, and an understanding of what the timing of the play is. And, you know, we talk in the past game, it comes down to timing, spacing, and trust. And uh, I think he's doing a really good job, you know, with all three of those right now. Have one more, Greg. Have you found that the change in jersey numbers has made any impact throughout the season in terms of your identification? I mean, it's a little annoying during the week, you know, <laughs> of, of terms of, yeah, you know, in terms of, of categorizing, you know, who's who. Um, but again, we spend a lot of time up here, you know, during the week and, you know, I don't think when it comes to game day, it's changed, you know, how well you know it. You probably just spend a little bit more time than you normally would or that, you know, I would have in the past on, you know, what numbers are bigs, what numbers are littles, what numbers are backers, what numbers are corners. Um, but if you're watching film, you know, and you're, you're breaking down during the week, you get a feel for who's who pretty quickly. What's been able to, it feels like in the split second, 13 years of training, if this is this and this is this, when it comes to a kick back in, you haven't found that to be the case. Your weekly prep has kind of erased that. Yeah, I think so. And I also think, you know, 13 years of knowing what a defense looks like and what guys are supposed to be in certain spots helps, you know, and the outliers you kind of make notes of during the week to, to give you a heads up for. What number would you wear if you could wear a D reflect the number you wear right now? Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wore it in high school. That was always always my favorite number. I don't know. I, I, Tim Couch was wearing it when I was in like eighth grade or whatever, seventh, eighth grade. He was at Kentucky and was throwing for like 5,000 yards every year in college. And I just remember watching being like, oh, man, that's, that's the guy you want to, you know, that's, that's how you want to play in college. And so that's why I started wearing it. But I don't know. I just always wore it. Basketball, baseball, those kind of things. What's that?
No, nah, 90 cent, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm a traditionalist. No, I was, um, thank you. Thank you. We're good? All right. Thank you, guys.